The second season of DC Universe's Titans has given hardcore comics fans plenty of hidden things to find. There are meaningful passcodes, direct swipes from comic book covers, and mentions of unseen beloved characters. We're breaking down all this and more in our roundup of Easter eggs you might have missed in Titans Season 2. The gun Joe Chill used to murder Bruce Wayne's parents makes something of an appearance in the Titans Season 2 premiere. Trigon subjects the Titans to the same kind of visions he used on Dick Grayson in the Season 1 finale. In the case of Jason Todd, he inserts the new Robin into the end of Dick's vision, just after Dick has killed Batman. Dick tells Jason that the younger hero is an animal who needs to be put down. Their fight ends with the infamous pistol sliding from its broken case to the floor near Jason. When Jason grabs the gun, Dick suggests Bruce would never keep the gun loaded. No, but I do. Does the Titans version of the Caped Crusader really keep Joe Chill's gun in the Batcave? Like the Batman of Justice League? Does Jason actually keep Chill's gun loaded while he's living with Bruce? Or is all this just part of the illusion? Considering we know that in the comics, Jason Todd eventually goes down some dark roads, including becoming the lethal vigilante the Red Hood, it's possible that what he says isn't just part of Trigon's nightmare. If not, it would not only be a betrayal of Bruce Wayne's trust, but would point to a dark turn for the character in the show equal to what happens in the comics. Just before Rachel defeats Trigon in the Titans 2 season premiere, the possessed Titans wait nearby, with the dark splotching around their eyes signaling their new loyalties. One shot in particular mirrors the cover of a comic that marked one of the more memorable battles between the Titans and Trigon. The cover to 1985's New Teen Titans issue 4 shows the heroes standing in a row with their altered eyes letting us know they're under Trigon's control. The players aren't all the same. The cover to the comic shows Beast Boy, Kid Flash, and Cyborg. Also, their eyes are colored red rather than the skin around their eyes taking on that inky black look. Regardless, the meaning behind the respective eye effects are clear as is the inspiration the show takes from the comic. In New Teen Titans issue 4, the heroes are forced to individually wrestle with Trigon's power, just as they are in the season 2 premiere. Rather than being exposed to nightmare visions that usually lead the heroes to making horrible and often lethal choices, the heroes of New Teen Titans issue 4 fight grey-skinned, red-eye shadow versions of themselves in the real world. One of the more interesting moments in the brief scenes involving Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke, in Season 2 so far is when he enters a passcode to enter his private arsenal. The conversation between Slade and Wintergreen suggests it's been a while since Slade has been home, and the scene in the country store suggests it's a re-emergence of the Titans that has brought him back. When Slade and Wintergreen approach the arsenal, for a moment it seems Slade may have forgotten the password. Wintergreen offers to enter it himself, but Slade insists. It's my house. The code he enters, 5639, works, and once you see the code, you may wonder if it was his memory that was bothering him or the code himself. The password isn't just a random grouping of numbers. If you look closely at the letters corresponding to the numbers on the keypad, it seems clear they're based on a name, Joey. Joey is a meaningful name in the Deathstroke mythos, as it's the first name of the superhero Jericho, Slade Wilson's youngest son. Actor and activist Shella Mann is set to play him in upcoming episodes of Titans. The beginning of Season 2 not only sees the Titans get a home, but gives us the appearance of one of DC Comics' heroic monuments, Titan's Tower. In most media before now, Titan's Tower has usually been represented, as it was originally in the comics, as a giant T-shaped building. It's also usually separated from the mainland on its own island. We don't get quite the same tower in Titans, but the show does pay tribute to the comic book version. Though the tower clearly is made to look more like a regular office building than the T-shaped headquarters of the comics, when the camera pulls back from the tower at the end of their Season 2 premiere, the Titan's living space is highlighted while a shadow falls on the bottom half of the building, making it look like a T. Probably the most blatant Easter egg we've seen in Titan Season 2 by the second episode is a phone call Donna Troy gets after she and Corey hand off the villain Shimmer to the police. As her phone rings, she looks at the screen and we see the name Roy Harper pop up. Roy Harper has had a number of different superhero code names over the years, the most recent being Arsenal. He was once known as Speedy, Green Arrow's sidekick. Colson Haynes occasionally plays the character on CW's Arrow, and in the comics, he was one of the many superheroes to die in the miniseries Heroes in Crisis. Could this be a precursor to Arsenal joining the Titans? There's no news about such an addition, but anything's possible. It could be that Donna and Roy are dating and that's the reason for the phone call. Or perhaps Roy was a member of the previous incarnation of the Titans. And like everyone else in Season 2's second episode, he has news about the re-emergence of Dr. Light. The third episode of Titans' second season, Ghost, has a little bit of fun with DC Comics' longtime competition. 
Hank, Dawn, and Donna finally show up to Titan's Tower to help hunt down Dr. Light, but they aren't too happy when Dick tells them Deathstroke's daughter is chilling out in a bedroom nearby. Shortly after the exchange, Dick visits Rose in her bedroom and brings her a black eye patch to replace the white bandage she's been wearing since she was introduced in the previous episode. Later that night, Rose has an uncharacteristically friendly conversation with Rachel in the Titan's kitchen. Rachel tells Rose her name is Prissy. Maybe it's you pretty now. Patch has a nice ring to it. Likely, the show's creative team is having a little fun at the expense of one of the more, well, transparent alter egos in the history of comics. Sure, Superman is silly for thinking he could hide his secret identity with nothing but a pair of glasses, but he's got nothing on Marvel's Wolverine, who took on the least convincing alter ego ever in the beginning of his first ongoing solo series. While in Southeast Asia, Wolverine wore a black eye patch and navigated the criminal underworld by calling himself Patch, apparently thinking no one would notice his trademark hair. Nice try, Patch. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite DC characters are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.